Another one of those arcade titles that seemingly made its way onto everything in the late 80s and early 90s is Gauntlet 2. Originally a 1986 arcade release, this hack and slasher dungeon crawler was on NES, Master System, several different home computers, including a particularly memorable Amiga adaptation, and more. The one I'm concerned with is the Game Boy one. The idea is to get as far as possible through these dungeons without dying, making your way to the exit of each level, killing or running away from enemies. You move around and can shoot in eight directions. I say shoot, but you're usually throwing axes or whatever. The game has a timer in the bottom left hand corner of the screen that starts at 2000. This is both your timer and health counter. As you go along, this will tick down, as if your overall health is linked to your character's hunger or tiredness or something. If it drops to zero, that's game over, and gauntlet games always feature permadeath. Getting hurt by an enemy takes off a chunk from this number, but you can replenish it by finding food items like meat. You first choose your character by choosing a direction, left for an elf, up to choose a warrior, right for a valkyrie, and down to play as a wizard. The elf, Questor, is quick and has decent magical abilities, but suffers in armour and firepower. Thor, the warrior, has no magic, but is a tank in terms of physical strength. Thyra, the Valkyrie, is my favourite character as she's super quick and has a really good defence level. Her firepower isn't the best, but she can still kill a lot of enemies with one hit. Lastly, Merlin is the strongest magically as you'd guess, but is best kept out of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff as he doesn't wear armour. The levels are randomised in every aspect, including level layouts. This roguelike element adds longevity to your experience, provided you don't hate the gameplay of course. As with all games in this vein, it's not just learning the various mechanics that's the key to victory, you also need a bit of luck in finding health or key drops at just the right time. The exit needs to show up in an area you can get to without having to mow down hundreds of monsters. The chances are that you won't be lucky on every floor, however. You need to find as many keys as possible on your travels, as these help you to progress at a reasonable clip. Gates and locked doors require keys to open up, but if you're stranded without a key, you can wait by the door and eventually it will unlock itself. This is kind of handy because of the random nature of the level layouts. You don't want to get super far into the game only to fail because of some silly soft lock that won't let you pass a certain part, through no fault of your own. The random nature of the game can often throw up some really interesting level designs. Occasionally all the walls on a stage could be invisible, an exit might be a fake, certain walls may morph into a heck ton of enemies when you touch it, lots of cool little features. There's also the possibility of finding a secret room, which can be achieved by completing specific achievements within the level. Sometimes when you start a level, you'll get a message such as don't be fooled, which means that if you find the real exit first amongst the fake ones, you'll go to the secret room. Within here, you can find food and magic potions, which can increase your shot strength, speed, power and so on. It can be a little off-putting trying to decipher things when you start playing the Game Boy version of Gauntlet 2. The game was never known for amazing graphics, but here it's often really tough to distinguish between objects. What's a treasure chest or what's an enemy's nest, for instance. There are always hordes of enemies lurking behind walls and such, and this was certainly attempted here, but often the game suffers lag because of the sheer number of moving sprites on screen. It's to be expected, though, and does actually make your responses a little easier to pull off. At first listen, the audio might sound pretty horrendous, but it's actually had a lot of effort put into it. Effort doesn't always equate to quality, of course, and as we saw with the chess master, overusing digitised sound can often be really painful to listen to. It's very raw in Gauntlet 2, but there is an abundance of different sounds and speech in the game. The Gauntlet Fugue stands as the one and only song in the whole game, and it's pretty rancid. It's the speech in particular that sets the sound apart here. Your character of choice is heartily welcomed at the start of your adventure, and throughout you'll hear lots of messages like, Valkyrie, your life force is running out, and Valkyrie, you're about to die. Sure, it's muffled, but still intelligible, and hey, it's there. Not many sound engineers risked it during the 8-bit era, even less so on the Game Boy. It's never worked as well as this to my recollection, certainly not on the Game Boy, 
The only other ones that spring to mind as being as good is Pikachu's voice acting in Pokemon Yellow, which was performed by Ikue Otani herself, don't you know? And the Let's Get Busy voice at the start of levels on Hammer and Harry. Both those games came much later on, however, so this was quite an admirable effort for 1991. For anyone familiar with the Gauntlet series, it should go without saying that these games are more fun in co-op mode, and that's certainly true here. Linking with a friend enables two warriors to journey through the game independently of each other. You don't have to be on the same screen, so can mix it up between branching out and holding firm together. So far as I'm aware, this is the only version of Gauntlet 2 where players' movements are not limited to the single screen shared between them. Quite the achievement. I'm sure Gauntlet 2 is not for everyone. It's pretty hard, and I've no idea if there's an ending to the game or if you just futilely venture on until you die. There's a lot to get used to in this game, but give it your time. Think how faithful to the arcade this port tried to be. The sound, graphics, and gameplay will grow on you, and you'll have a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.